right. Shop Talk Week 15 of Commercial Real Estate. The beginning of Q2. He'll here with uh, the Nardizzler, Wilbur Nardizzler. So. Not halfway done yet, <laughs> CRE bros, but getting close. Yeah. Um, Deals done today will get done in Q3. Remember that. That's right. Quick selfless plug here. My band, Trinity Junction, has a show this Saturday at the Gin and Prosper. If anybody's, anybody's around, it's in downtown Prosper. Downbeat is at 7.30. And we also have the upcoming NAOP show at the Rustic. So for you commercial real estateers, get signed up to go to NAOP and come watch us throw down some tunage for you. Do you so, know what date that? Hold on, let me look that up. That is fast. on Thursday, April 25th. Oh, I mean, I have to mark that off. Yeah. Probably need to bring that up in our Monday meetings. Yeah. So. Fun. So anyways, shameless self plug real quick, but uh, not a ton of economic news to talk about this week other than you got initial jobless claims kind of hanging around that mm-hmm. low 200s, 210K is the forecast, 210 was... 210,000 was the last uh, reading on that, but uh, the Fed is speaking on Wednesday. Okay. Um, so, what in regards to, or is it just, it's just kind of having a just, I bulletin don't know. board item? I don't know. I mean, he deal. just talked about rates. So, okay. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really know what he's going to talk Interesting. about. But. All right. Our new stat we track U.S. Oh, debt. Well, the government did a good job last week. They Interesting. only went into debt nineteen billion versus seventy-seven billion last week, the previous week. That's so, good. All right, yeah, way to go, guys. You're good like, job. You're, you're on your way up. <laughs> nineteen b. So, anyways, thank you, U.S. Debt Debtclock dot com. All right, the Dow pretty much unchanged. Closed out at thirty-nine eight oh seven. That's up about 30 points, 25 points. S&P closed out at 52.54. That's just up about 20 points. The NASDAQ closed out at 16,379. So it was down a little bit, but pretty much unchanged. West Texas crude up to 83 bucks. A little steadily climbing oh, yeah. there. So drill, baby, drill. Let's go. Five-year treasury was up. Yep. From 4.187 to 4.227. And the 10-year pretty much unchanged, 4.202 to 4.205. So for remains the same. Let's look at our real estate stocks. Real estate stocks took a little little hit. Oh, REIT office coming back down. You know, hit the top, coming back down. Just a little bit of arbitrage. One there, day performance. People. That's today. One day performance. So on the week, real estate diversified was the leader up 3.06%. Real estate development stocks up 2.26%. REIT diversified up 1.88%. Yeah. On the one month performance, REIT development is leading the charge 8.42%. Let's see. What do we got next? Oh. The term of the week Ooh. brought to you by Wilbur Narduzzi. So I was in our markets doing business development, toured something, and I was done touring and, you know, pricing comes up at the end of these things. And I was like, man, like, what's kind of the, the expectations here? He, he, the broker said, well, this is a little bit of a, the case of the search for the Saudi prince. Search for the Saudi prince. I looked at him kind of like, what the heck are you talking about? So I guess he uses that term and it's becoming a little bit more popular when pricing is a little bit outlandish and unrealistic and the Saudis will come in and buy it, i.e. kind of a phrase that uh, the oil money will come in and overpay for for something <laughs> as uh, typically is is done. So I thought that was kind of funny. Oh, we're searching for the Saudi prince. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a Saudi prince. <laughs> <laughs> we're not Saudi princes here. So wow. I was I was laughing in the truck court on that one. So for all of you looking for the Saudi prince, don't send your BS to me. Yeah. There's uh the Saudi prince is probably not out there. Exactly. 
And he he had a good ch- chuckle about it because he understood, but he just didn't want his client wanted. Let's see. <laughs> okay, in news, uh, these stories just fascinate me. Story built, ex CEO. Mm-hmm. Avoid service as new allegations emerge. This guy's getting trying to get served. Someone's trying to serve him, and he just keeps avoiding it. I, it <laughs> I'm on StoryBuilt's website right now, and you go to uh, listen to this. According to forensic accounting, StoryBuilt paid <laughs> one project's investors a 35 percent return, even though the development lost money. It allegedly paid them with funds raised for a different project. Oh God! The former principals also violated operating agreements, filed incorrect tax returns, and failed to create accurate, supportable financial statements. The receiver's forensic accounting alleges. So Ponzi scheme, is that what we're dealing with here? Sounds like it. So they have a they had a project in Lake Highlands. Okay. And it's right off of uh Walnut Hill and Abrams. Mm-hmm. I drove by it this weekend just to in the neighborhood. The new guy is already building on it. Yeah. These it's like, dudes. man, like that what a piece of great dirt and you just kind of screwed it all up. You go to their investor, it says invest with us on their website and it says under construction. Oh God. <laughs> you try to find their people and it's just a blank page. I mean, I would just take my website down if I was them. Yeah. Although that, but these guys probably totally scam their investors, you know? Yeah. I mean, these terrible. are probably dudes with like backgrounds too, right? Like, Bro, big money. These projects are huge. Yeah. I mean, a multifamily project is nuts. Uh, it's like $100,000 a door minimum to build that thing sometimes. 200000 a door, depending on where you're at. Anthony Ciela. Maybe on LinkedIn. That's what I was just going to look at. Yeah, here we go. PSW Real Estate. Now, with over 20 years of experience, mm. real estate developer... Rent and home building, over 20 years' experience in real estate development in home building industry. Let's see. Audit WP Carey, University of Wisconsin. Madison? No, this is some mm, sad jump around. Has a bachelor's in accountant, accounting from Arizona State. Anyways, just. I still just don't, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, uh, it's one thing to screw it up and go tell everybody you screwed up. It's a whole nother thing oh, to yeah. just run with the money. So that was an interesting story. Adam Newman <gasps> buying back. He made a $500 million bid for WeWork. He's back. That could go up to $900 million of financing and diligence firm up. You've got, have you watched We Failed? No. I, it, what is it on HBO or? I can't remember. Hold on. We all look it up. We Failed. We Failed. We Failed. Uh, was it Adam Newman? No. Um, is that what it's called? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think it's called that. I'm just trying to get the, because if you're punching We Failed into Google, you get all kinds of. We Crashed. We Crashed. We crashed. You got to watch We Crashed. It is like you're just looking at those two. Oh, it's on Apple. Yeah, okay. him and his wife, and you're just like, really? Like, I don't know. WeWork's always been kind of fascinating to me. Yeah. But uh, Jared Leto plays <laughs> Adam Newman, and he does a phenomenal job. So if you have okay. not watched that movie, I would watch it. But okay. it'd be hilarious. You know, we talked about this before on here. He had a $450 million personal line of credit. not uh, uh, Personal line of credit, not personally guaranteed. Guaranteed through his shares in WeWork, which are now worth nothing, and <clears throat> which he has no intentions of paying SoftBank back with. And he's probably going to use their line of credit money that he took from them to buy WeWork, which SoftBank will probably like finance it. That's how that world works, right? Dude. <laughs> so hit that well, baby. So, anyways, uh, it, it would be interesting if he bought it back. That's nuts. Yes, that is nuts. So we'll see. Good luck to you. So did you see this? Uh, Tarrant County CAD got hit with ransomware. So they finally admitted it. Oh, it's yeah, it's out there. Oh, okay. Cause Bella's been trying to like get up on it and like yeah. try to search and it she's like, I don't know what's going on. And she couldn't find 
Hackers demanded seven hundred thousand from the district, which assigns property values in Fort Worth. Yeah, that's what I thought too. That's kind of low. I was, I was about to say, just pay that shit and move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I hate to put it like that. We don't negotiate with terrorists, but yeah, I, I think yeah, I think that's the problem. Once you do it, then it's just gonna. So news of the recent fall of year. Let's see. Like, I guess they've had some hard times. Let's <laughs> see. DCAT had to pay. Yeah. 170,000 to retrieve information. The hack shut down the offices of DCAT. This this happened, what, two years ago? Yeah, 2022. Yeah. That was crazy. DCAT got shut down for 72 days. But they only had to pay $170,000? I thought it was millions. I thought they just rebuilt the back end. And that's, just said, yeah. oh, we'll just rebuild it. That's what I thought. Mm. But anyways, huh. that's... Uh, uh, I guess Tarrant Cads had some other issues huh. in the uh, let me look it up sort of leadership and stuff like yeah. that. So. Yeah, seven hundred grand, man. Golly, it, it doesn't feel like a lot of money. If you're listening to this and you're a hacker and you're gonna go hit appraisal district, yeah, <laughs> go for the jugular. It's no, I'm saying. kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. But but it just seems like a light ask. You know, for how operationally intense that thing is, well, just for what it is. You yeah, know? I mean, you're talking about two point seven percent of the real estate values for one of the major, yeah, real estate markets in the world. Yeah, seven hundred thousand sounds like a rounding error. Yeah, I guess the the deal is like we're not supposed to interact with these folks, right? Like, is that the whole? That's what I was always taught in the insurance business: like, don't touch anything. It, well, because they want you to pay them in crypto and yeah, and all that stuff. I guess it's kind of like to your point. Like once you pay them once, it's, the floodgates are open. Yeah, they're just gonna come out and get you. Again. Yeah. Hmm. So, hmm, interesting. Seven hundred grips. That's all you want, huh? Vincent Puente, chairman of the Tarrant Appraisal District, led the meeting with a prayer, denouncing the ransomware attack as evil. <laughs> oh, oh, nice people. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's kind of all I got for this week. You got anything? Uh, no, not really. You're going to go back to San Antonio and look at some more stuff? Yeah. If you got some stuff between Austin and San Antonio, hit me up. I'll be in the area Thursday, Friday. Yep. All right. We will see you next week, real estaters. See ya. Peace. Peace.